Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to the Community Music Center. My name is Michelle Hernandez, and I am the program coordinator here at CMC. I'm so happy that we're all happy, or that we're all here in person together. Uh, you know, finally in person. This is our first um, San Francisco Peninsula, and who are still living here today. We make this acknowledgement to create greater public consciousness of native sovereignty and cultural rights as a step toward equitable relationships and reconciliation. Our concerts with conversations have a long and beautiful history here at CMC, and they are brought to us through a special partnership with San Francisco Performances. These world-class artists are a gift to us from SFP, and I want to thank and shout out President Melanie Smith, Melanie, I don't, I don't think she's in here. Thank you, Melanie. <laughs> and Yuri Cho, who are here with us tonight. I, I think I see you guys outside. Um, for making this possible for us. Thank you so much. Tonight, we are thrilled to welcome back the celebrated pianist and composer Alfredo Rodriguez for his second performance here at CMC. And as is our tradition at CMC, Alfredo will share some beautiful music. And at the end, he will take your questions and, about his music and process. With that being said, I want to welcome Alfredo to the stage. Take it away.
Let's only that one. Let's see if I can get the mic. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't know if I can talk now. <laughs> I'll talk first for a little okay, bit. Okay. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> okay, so now we have our question segment. Um, is there anyone in the audience who has any questions yet? We have one. I'm from Cuba, Havana, Cuba. <laughs> you see the flavor? Yeah. Okay, that's good then. I did my I did my work. Back here. Well, in my in my my personal situation was I I grew up playing classical music. Uh, my parents brought me to the classical school of music when I was seven years old. So that's actually the school of music that we have in Havana is classical music. Still until today, I don't know why, but we don't have like a jazz school or even like a Cuban school of music. We don't really have that. You know, we learned that because it's in, the music is in our blood, and we you know experience with our parents, our friends, and we learned that music, but what we really learn at the school is the classical music. I think, and that's the ground, in my opinion. You know, we have you have to go through that style of music in order to be, in my humble opinion, a good musician. You know, because classical composers are incredible, uh, all of them from Europe. So then, I had this balance between going at the school in the mornings and studying classical music. And then, my father is a singer, so I grew up listening to Cuban music and popular music from our country, and playing that at night, even though I was a kid. So then I had that balance, plus I was very fortunate that my uncle was moving from one apartment to another one, and the only thing they left in the new apartment was the Cone Concert by Keith Jarrett. So then I discovered improvisation at the age of 12, 13 years old, and I, you know, I, I got so you know, I cultivated by, by that type of uh, creating. Uh, process. So then I remember at that time, even though I was playing, you know, like big, difficult classical pieces, I couldn't really improvise at all. I remember myself sitting at the piano and I couldn't play the, the C notes because I wasn't prepared for, to do anything outside of the bo outside of classical music. And then since that day until today, I've been just making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's true because I've been just learning through mistakes. That's the way that I been learning and I think that's it for me has been very positive because I think that's the fastest way and also you start finding your own way of speaking through music I mean there are endless combinations it's like talking right now you know I'm obviously improvising English is not like my not even like my third language but I'm trying right so it's the same with music you have to try I, I tell all the time to students or anyone that wants to uh, tells me something uh, ask me something about improvising first thing is you have to try you have to go out of the box and not be afraid of afraid of mistakes because that's part of humanity we make mistakes every day with our lives and we learn from or sometimes we don't even learn from them but the thing is like we you, in order to keep going you have to you know like sometimes do things that are positive and sometimes not that positive. So then we have to learn from that in order to develop your personality and all of that. It's the same with music. So then I, ha I had this great honor to have like a big diaspora of music in, in my, you know, in my house, listening to music from all over. And then through jazz, to be honest, I discovered so many other cultures. 
just opened so, uh, opened so many doors for me that I was able, you know, to come here to the States, first of all. Um, actually, I had a, you know, this is another question, but I had um, the great honor to, to be in a... Okay. <laughs> He didn't want, you know, he didn't want it to, oh my gosh. Se quebró. This one is done. Is it fine? Okay, we keep improvising then. So, <laughs> keep improvising. So, so then um, I was selected with the top pianist in the world to play at the Montoya Festival. It's one of the most prestigious jazz festival in Europe. And while there, I had the honor to meet Quincy Jones. He was part of the album. And right away after I finished my performance, he came to myself and he said that he wanted to know at that time that I was a Cuban living in Cuba and obviously Cuba and the States have had so many uh, broken relationships for so many years when it comes to political situations. So then they wrote me an email like like a month after that saying that Quincy wanted to do something with me and I was as you can imagine so excited about it but it took me four years just to make the decision come here to the States. I was in Mexico playing a show with my dad and I decided to cross the border from Mexico to the States more than 12 years ago. So then I came to the States and I started working for 12 years ago with Quincy Young Production and I've been able to be very fortunate to travel almost the whole world and to have six albums under my name and basically to, you know, to my dream. You know, I, I made my dream come true. Uh, you know, so, so then what I'm saying is that um, I had this honor since I came to the States. The States is like in San Francisco. It, I, I went straight to Los Angeles, but San Francisco is the same. Very multicultural city, right? So you can, right here, there are millions of cultures, and I love that. You know, we didn't have that in Cuba because our political situation, we, we, we have had some like contradictions, all right? So it is like we have created this very strong and unique culture because we've been isolated from the whole world, but at the same time, we have missed so much that is happening in our society. So then I came here, and this opened my eyes too. I was like, wow, I have, I have been missing so much from the whole world that I want to collaborate with artists from all over. And actually, I, I've been exploring that, and that so much and so much that I, I think at this point, my music even though has the roots of my country, Cuba, and obviously, as I mentioned before, classical music and jazz has been something very close to myself since I was very young, but also has become something very global and something that I, I, I play my life. So I am playing something that I am living today. And then I think that's my message, through my music. It's like to play who you are, and I am a lot of things. I am not only one thing. So then I, some, when some people try to put me in that box of jazz musician or classical or Cuban musician, I always don't like that because I'm not that. I am like a mix of a lot of things, and I, I will hope I keep going like this. And I'm going to show you how we Yeah. I mean, definitely they they they. In the past, it was more drastic, is what I am saying. Why? Because now with technology, even Cuba is still is isolated, but still now people have a little bit of more access to whatever is happening in the whole world. So I think we can, I can check out some of the friends that are playing in Cuba, and they can they can check out what we as a Cuban are creating outside of Cuba, because definitely there is a like a Cuban culture in Cuba, and there is a Cuban culture outside of Cuba, because so many Cubans like myself, we've been living outside and creating something different because what I explained before, so many cultures and different way of living, right? So then I think now we are a little more connected uh, when it comes to art, because as, as I mentioned before, technology has, you know, bring us a little more together, but still there is so much gap between, huh? Yeah, there is, you know, like, there are not many possibilities there. So 
which again comes back to kind of like the same that I was talking before, which is like in Cuba, we have our own culture there, and it's uh, still more isolated when it comes to music al also, you know. Uh, Basically, what I'm saying is that Cuban music it still sounds very Cuban with the, when the Cubans play, in, the Cubans that play are in Cuba. But when s you hear Cubans outside of Cuba, you will hear a little more of mix because of what I was explaining before. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> more Any questions? questions? Wow. No? No more questions? Gabby? I mean, when you play, uh, like what I did is a conversation with myself. So it's kind of like, you know, it's that. It's very simple. You know, I'm just talking to myself. Um, which I like. I like a lot, to be honest. I like it. I like it to play just the piano, to be just the piano myself. But I prefer talking to other people. So then that comes, you know, like when, when you start, like, um, creating music with other musicians, other human beings. That's something that's very special because then you need to also bring uh, space for the conversation. You know, now you ask me a question and I'm not, I decided not to talk on top of you, for example. We do the same in music or not. There are, there are musicians that they decide, I'm, you're talking, but I'm talking on top of you because this is my personality and this is what it is. You know, mu music and conversations are, are, are the same. You know, when, you, when we are playing together, millions of options are there waiting for us. So it's about decisions. You know, it's about intuition. It's about what you are, you know, sometimes you don't want to play and you want to listen to whatever is happening, but sometimes you want to go ahead and just play on top. And sometimes... You want everyone to be uh, screaming, so all the musicians are playing so loud and it's making you crazy, but that's the goal of that song. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes no. Sometimes it's very quiet because you are trying to say something peaceful, and then someone doesn't want to do, doesn't want to go into that peaceful mood, and they just play something on top of you, and they break your, your mood. That happens all the time. What I'm saying at the end, you know, it, it has to, at least for me, it comes, uh, I mean, I try to enjoy as much as I can all type of situations. And obviously, then, after that, you choose. You choose who are those people you feel really connected to. It's love. You know, love is very important. I mean, that's what you feel when you see someone. And even sometimes you just see someone and you feel something, right? I mean, it could be love. It could be a friendship. It could be anything. But you want to develop that energy, that uh, chemistry that you, you experience at the moment, right? So then it's the same with music. Sometimes you're playing with someone and you don't, you almost don't feel anything because it's light. And then I, I, I think <laughs> the, right, the right decision will be like not to develop that. But then if you feel the opposite, which is like you feel something extremely happy and you're excited about th that sound that you created between the two of, of, the, of you or three or four or a symphony, then I think you should develop that as a musician, but that works for anything in life. So again, as I say, I always try to see and think about music as a human, not just as a musician. And I always say this also, music doesn't make sense for me when it comes from notes. Music has to come from your life, your experiences. And when I sit in the piano, I play my life. I play my, my every, this was like, I play like it was the last time that I played. So, you know, I, uh, that's, I have a supreme love for music. And um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I exactly the moment. I don't. I I don't know. What I remember is like since I was a, a little kid, I remember being very attracted by by music, by sounds in general. When I started playing the piano, then I I want I started like trying to 
translate those sounds into the into the music, into the piano, into the piano, the sound of the piano. Um, I, I I always have been very passionate about it, you know. Um, but obviously, life has like moments, you know, and some moments you feel more connected to the music, the people, the whatever, and sometimes you don't feel it. But I haven't had a moment that I feel this is not what I. I am meant to do to be or something. It always has been for me a necessity. You know, music for me is like drinking water or like eating or sleeping. Something that you or even like talking. You know, we the, uh, our parents, you know, teach you how to talk and how to walk. And sometimes when you're walking, you don't think too much about it, right? Some people they do, but 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 usually we walk and we about I need to do the right. So for me, music is the same. It's part of my, it's part of my body, part of my soul, and uh, I just live with it. It's, it's not something that is, you know, detached. It's completely something that is. It comes together already with. Uh, but I didn't feel like that as a kid. You know, as a kid, uh, it was like my, you know, a passion, my something that I had a great um, excitement for it. So I was always very excited to play the music. But it wasn't like I felt, you know, since I was a kid, like this is my life. Not only my passion, it's my life. You know, if I don't have music, I'm going to die soon. It's like water. It's like water. If I don't drink water at some point, someday I'm not here anymore. So it's the same for me, music. Even though sometimes, you know, I can take my time and I don't have to be around the whole time. And that, that works now. But when I was a kid, my parents didn't let me. They were like, okay, you have to, if you want to really be a musician, you have to practice, you have to develop, you know, whatever is, is good for you is to practice now because this is the moment. And it's true. When you are a little kid, you have to practice. You have to put so much effort and sacrifice so many things. That's something important too. There are many boring things about becoming a professional musician, a professional artist, a professional sportsman. I always put this this uh, this example because everyone usually understands about sports because people like it. And if you want to become Usain Bolt, you have to run every day at four in the morning for hours and hours and hours. Remember that 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 person only has ten seconds to break the world record, right? So you're practicing for years. And years and years every day waking up so early. People think like, okay, he's the fastest, you know, whatever. You know, like people have that enjoyment. That Those 10 seconds were what people enjoy. But sometimes we don't really know what is really behind someone who really wants to be on the top at something in the world. There is so much competition. And then if you want to do something spe special and, and create something important for humanity, you have to spend millions of hours doing it. Professionalism is the art of the detail. So we have to work on the details every day. No, not really. I mean, what is a break? For a period of time? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh huh. Yeah, no, no, not really. No, no, for me it wasn't like that. No, not when I was a teenager. Maybe when I was like eight or nine years old. Maybe I wanted to play a little bit of baseball with my friends, and my parents would say, "Yeah, but after you finish practicing." But when I was a teenager, no, no, at all. I remember being so involved with music that I. I remember after 13, 14 years old that my parents didn't have to tell me any more practice. I was already, you know, just going to the piano because I wanted to do, and, and they never forced it to. When I wanted to finish, yeah, I had that discipline in me. Uh, it became like a discipline because my, my, uh, my teachers, too, uh, they were very strict about practicing. And, but it was a balance. I wanted also to play the piano. And uh, I understood that, that I, have to, that I had to do certain things that maybe you don't like that much, like the science of music and practicing scales and harmony and all of that, in order to make it better, you know. So I understood that, and I was 
decided to, I decided to, okay, I'm going to spend my time first doing this, and later I did everything as a, as a, as a kid, as a teenager. You know, I, I'm like a normal person. It's not like I've been just playing the piano and that's it. No, not at all. That, that, that is not exactly what I'm telling you music is about. It's the opposite. You know, at that time I was exta- studying a lot because I was at the, at the middle school, high school, university. I had to do it because my teachers had plans for me. So I had to be on top of the music all the time. But then, as, as I mentioned, you know, I had music has to have a space also for you to learn many other things in order to, uh, uh, even more when I, when I became like more an improviser because I, I understood that improvisation, as I said before, it doesn't come from music. Music doesn't come from music. That's so boring. Not from notes, not from science. That's something that you have to learn and do the, ma- do the homework, but then it has to come from your life, in my opinion. You know, Even more for me, because I, did, I, de- I decided to dedicate my life to improvisation. Right? So then I have to play me. I have to play my life. I have to play my feelings. And then if I only have music in my life, I'm only going to be playing music, and that would be very boring. I have to play many things that I have to experience in life in order to get developed in my personality and my knowledge and, and then my music. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh, my way. <laughs> Don't know about that. <laughs> Miguel? Yes. Yes. Um, well, actually, I grew up listening, as I mentioned, my dad is a singer, so I grew up listening um, from the 50s and the 60s from Cuba, his childhood. So then I grew up all the music from Osvaldo Farres, which is the composer of Quizás, Quizás, Quizás. And also the song that I play in the middle, which is called Ayma Mainez, it's another song also from Eliseo René. Those are great, you know, classic Cuban composers. It's like standards from Cuba, right? Mm-hmm. So then I grew up playing this type of music, and I always like in my shows just to, you know, just to play them in my own way, but just to play all of that music I grew up playing with. I, I grew up playing Cuban music at home, so every time that I play Quizás, 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 for example, brings so many memories about mm-hmm. my heritage of Cuba and everything that I physically left behind. Yes. When you played the first couple of songs, I really felt a very powerful connection there. And uh, I don't know what you're feeling, but I was feeling really something powerful. Yeah. And uh, I think it's uh, it, it really brought a lot of uh, meaning to your show. Well, I'm 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 happy. I'm happy that that I, that. I think that that's something very powerful are the language of music, right? Is that even though I'm not, I'm not talking to you through language, I'm not telling you this and this and that through English or Spanish or anything. It's just with sounds, and it can touch you, you know, like from uh, people from all over. This can happen in Indonesia, in Australia. Maybe someone that I don't really that, that I have no connection at all. We connect, and that's something so beautiful about music and powerful. Definitely, I was, you know, as I said before, I'm feeling, when I play, uh, it's all about feelings. It's all about whatever I'm feeling at the moment. And what happens sometimes, too, is like, we as human beings, sometimes I feel in a higher energy, or sometimes I don't feel as high energy, and uh, that will that will go through my music as well. But obviously, you know, um, certain songs are like different messages, you know, and for example, a song like it's the second song that I play, which is called Sabanas Blancas, is about Havana. Every time that I play that song, I am in Havana, you know, with my friends, with my family. I'm sorry, living the life that I was living there and also living the life that I am living here. But it's like a un sueño. It's like a dream, you know, it's like a dream of being back, but here. <laughs> So I don't know, it, it brings me so many um, 
memories and feelings every time that I play a song. I try to choose music also when I play music that is connected to me because that's in very important also. You know, you have to feel it. If you don't feel it, you won't feel it too. So then that's what I what I try to do, you know, to play music that is connected to me and I feel it. So then also the message goes through. Uh, the first one was mine. The second one is 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 not mine. It's a composer. It's called Gerardo Alfonso. Yeah, it's a song that he dedicated to Havana. You know, Sabanas Blancas is like um, white sheets. It's it, uh, the balcony. You know, we have in in Havana in in old Havana. Everyone, you know, like um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to say. It. Yes, they dry the yeah. So. Yes, yes. So he dedicated that song to Havana. What was that? Musical influence. Uh, that's a tough question because I really like, uh, you know, like all kind of music. But I would say that I grew up playing Johann Sebastian Bach, and he is one of my favorite composers for sure. I play a lot of his music, and I also listen a lot to his composition. I, you know, this is another example. He's someone from Germany many, many, many years ago. And since the first moment that I heard him, I was like, wow, this connects to me a lot. And that was what happened also with Keith Jarrett. I listened to that album when I was 12, and I was like, wow, this changed my life. So it's so amazing that someone that you don't know is not your friend, is that you haven't talked at all. And then you spend so much time with them. I have spent so much time with musicians like Kisjare or Mozart or Bach or Thelonious Monk or I don't know, anyone. You know, Cuban, Cuban music, obviously, because it's something that I have in my roots. But I also feel very connected to any folklore from all over. You know, any, any folklore that I listen to any country, I, for some reason, I'm very curious about why. You know, why, yeah. So they are trying to... Dis you know, to discover more music related to that. The low? The most. Uh, I mean, Quincy is someone very special. Um, I remember the first week when I came to the States, I went to his house, right? So I was, I was playing, and when I finished playing, he came to myself and said, I felt never change for anyone. Just be yourself. Not even for me, like as a producer or anything. There are going to be so many people that are going to influence you. And just be yourself. You have to be happy every time that you go to bed. And you have to be like, okay, I am, I am happy. I am being just myself. I am not sacrificing my personality, my heritage, my roots for anyone. This is just who I am, and I'm going to go with this that worlds gave me uh, like that every day. It's very important from someone like Quincy who has produced every <laughs> anyone. He has been, you know, as you know, Frank Sinatra, Michael Jackson, Lionel Hampton, D.C. Lesky, Ella Fitzgerald, a anyone. He has, in my opinion, he is one of the, you know, like the biggest legends of music of, of, of all time. And then a producer like, like him just go to the studio with you and just trying to be the trying to bring the best out of you you know like trying to transform you or trying to make you this or that or think about money or think of, no not really i'm sure they had so much fun with michael jackson because you know I, I, they were on those studios just having fun not like thinking about now sometimes unfortunately when it comes to mainstream uh, music they think about money and that's why music sounds like money But but at that time, it was something very different because, you know, they were trying to create music and feeling in the music. And then if you become the, the most popular artist of all time, like Michael Jackson, you sell the most records in the world, that's beautiful, you know. Okay, beautiful, coming. <laughs> but not because of money, never. That's what he told me, and that's very important because he's someone very successful and also a businessman. So it's, it's, it's extremely important for me. You know, he's one of the humblest musicians, that, and that's that's very important, in my opinion. That goes through music. That goes through his music, through his legendary career.
Actually, that's a good question. I didn't want to be a pianist at first. I wanted to be a drummer. So then I told my parents to, you know, I always, you know, I was having fun with pencils and, you know, all of that in my house. But they brought me to the school of music at, se at six, seven years old, and I, I had to be ten if I wanted to, you know, like play the percussion. So I then said, okay, I'm just going to say piano, you know, because I had to choose between piano and violin. And I said, okay, I like the, the, the sound of the piano better. But my, po my, my focus, I, I was, my mind was, okay, I'm going to be a drummer at 10. Then I had an incredible teacher, piano teacher, that, you know, made me fall in love with the piano. I was 10, and my teacher was like, okay, you want to change? I was no, I don't want to change anymore. So I, you know, the piano became my life. But at the beginning, I want, actually then, later, I understood that the piano can be anything. So I'm a drummer, too. It's just like I don't play the drums. I play the drums with the piano, which is the one that I have, you know, practiced so much. I never have, pra you know, I, I have never taken the time to practice any other instrument that is not the piano. But in my mind, we can, we can be anything. When, when you are with your instrument, you can become anything, right? So it can be like a piano, a sax player, or, or I don't know, an architect, <laughs> a painter. I feel like that sometimes, you know, even when I play, I'm like, Psh! Look at this pain, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's everything for me. So. Well, thank you so much, Alfredo. I think that's thank all you. we have time for. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.